Yeah. Hello there, I'm Tim and he's gone into hibernation again and this is How to Murder Feet, rambling with rambling. Uh, Beast from the East bonus edition. Uh, I wasn't going to do any more of these until May, but look at this. Where am I, you might ask? Yellowknife, Iceland, somewhere in Siberia. Well, not far off from Siberia, actually. The weather's from Siberia. This is, uh, this is Basingstoke. This is, this is the land of my fathers. Spelt Basingstoke, pronounced Amazingstoke. And uh, I'm just going to go walk around the block today. Well, a 16-mile block. Ah, and I've just taken a bus halfway across town to get to here, which is uh, Hatch Warren. Uh, which is the southernmost tip of Basingstoke and from here I'm going to head south to the motorway, go over a bridge and join the Wayfarers Walk which I mean, you might remember me blittering all about on the South Downs Way and this section that I'm going to follow today will go south for about 10 miles then I'm going to t- take a left at some point and follow something called the Ox Drove which will bring me back up to the uh, hilltop village of Farley Wallop, no sniggering uh, which will bring me back down the hill to here uh, this this here suburb about a, about a 16 mile trip generally a usual kind of distance for me but this makes it all more interesting we got um yeah i'll talk more about it as we go but basically there was some really freakish weather from siberia that's uh, drowned our country in snow as as much as like ooh, two, two like 10 centimeters in places i mean this looks like it's uh let's have a dig here try and find the path at the bottom there we go so yeah, that looks, that, looks, that looks about a whole whew, four centimetres to me. So and naturally our country ground to a halt and everyone's gone mad. Um, but I thought I might just go out for a walk anyway, because it's, it's my fortnight on when I do my walk and weather is no excuse. Although, um, yes, I might die out here. It's not as bad as it looks, actually. There's a wind, there's a bit of a wind. It's still from the east. But the temperatures today uh, are freezing at the moment and rising up to about four degrees in the afternoon. So, I mean, this is the end. The weather that dumped all this has gone. And to be, to be honest, by mid next week, well, Monday or Tuesday even, this will probably all have melted. So I thought I'd bring your camera out and uh, show you all a winter wonderland or something, or at least uh, document my last moments as usual. So, um, yeah, I'm going to better get a move on because uh, <laughs> it's starting to seep in a bit. Um, and I'll talk to you later. <clears throat> Yeah, of course, before we get out there and get yomping in the countryside, we have to get past the golf courses. Look at that pristine white wilderness. Not much going on out there today. I don't know, that would be quite an adventurous round of golf. Just get a day glow orange or pink golf ball, you'll be all right. I mean, basically the whole thing's just turned into one massive sand trap. Still got stripey, sticky pole things to see where the flags are. In there somewhere. I think putting might be a challenge. You're just going to have to chip it straight in, really, aren't you? No stamina. No endurance, these golfers. I've seen plenty of dog walkers today already. Kind of grudging respect for them. They're out in all weathers because they've got to be, really. Little canine friends. They don't care what the weather's like. They need to do the business. I saw um, one of them giant husky Siberian dog things. You know, the white and grey ones with the the big startled grey eyes. It looked like it was loving it. I think it's about the only person I've seen enjoying today's weather. What about it does the rest of the year? Mopes, I imagine. Uh, in the background you can hear is the M3. The constant companion of Basingstoke and surrounds. You can hear it bloody everywhere. I'm going to cross it on a footbridge in a minute. One of these little abandoned footbridges. I'll show you in a minute when we get there. Yeah, soon be away and out. But yes. Look at that. It's the same, same upside down as it does the way up. That kind of sky. Not expecting any more snow, but uh, might be some rain around three or four today. Oh, just for reference, it's like the, the 28th of February or the 1st of March or something. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's what we thought. No one's prepared for it at all. We don't really do preparedness for snow. Rain, you know, we can do rain. Famous for it. Snow. Kind of an alien concept. Everything falls to pieces. All right, onward. There we go. 
Weight limit, two tonnes. Yeah. Is that two? Oh, 32 tonnes. All right. I think I'll be fine, frankly. I mean, I've got my bag, but, you know. So, yeah, this is a weird older bridge. It's a little, little single-track roadway. There's actually tarmac under here, but it just goes into this little bit of woods and stops. There's a road on the other side as well. Over houses and farm buildings. Probably a major throughway before the motorway was built. It's like 60 years ago, something like that. There it is, the M3. Speak up. Yeah, business as usual on there. We can at least keep motorways going, mostly. Although I hear some of the ones up north got pretty hammered. This is all relatively light compared to what happened in Edinburgh and, Edinburgh and Dun um, Glasgow. And they, they got several, they got several, almost metres of snow and things up there. So I think this is the Wayfarers Walk on here. It goes off down there. I mean, if you follow it that way far enough, you'll eventually get to High Clear and Beacon Hill there, Newbury, uh, where there's Lord Carnarvon's grave on top of the Beacon Hill there. I have to show you that someday. Here we go, look. No acorns today. WW, Wayfarers Walk. Yeah, no acorns to follow today. But I've been around these parts a lot before. I live here basically, so, uh, well, nearby. So I don't think I'm gonna have any navigating trouble today, even without the acorns to follow. They'll be unusual not seeing them. They've been a constant companion on my adventurings. So yeah, follow it that way far enough and eventually you end up down, well, I think you cross the South Downs way near Winchester. We saw that on my first day of that. I don't know where it goes from there, down to the coast maybe? Portsmouth perhaps? I'd have to, look, I'd have to ask. Yeah, good. Dressed up well today. I mean, there was a lot of trepidation when I was telling people I'd be out today on Twitter and such, but uh, I've no, this is not my first rodeo. So got me, got me hat, thermal hat there, it's all good. Hood from the Anorak as well, if that gets bad. Um, so we've got the, the, my trusty, my trusty Anorak, Anorak there, so Gore-Tex Craghoppers thing. Got a jumper, and then a shirt. Oh, bump, 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 microphone. Uh -huh. I've got my long sleeve thermal under, shirt under there. I didn't bother with the thermal leggings today. We got, because uh, I'm wearing my, my waterproof trousers on top of my normal hiking trousers. Quick glimpse of uh, something there. Yeah, but I didn't bother with the thermal thermal leggings because uh, experience has taught me that actually my legs get quite hot when I go doing this kind of thing. So I don't want three layers. I think two's fine if I keep the world approved on today. Today the big problem is keeping dry rather than warm. I mean, because it's naught degrees, but I've got enough stuff on and I'll be keeping busy all day. But it's the wetness. If I get too much snow on me, which melts and then the wind picks up a bit, that could become very unpleasant very quickly. So I've gone with the waterproof trousers from the start rather than in the bag. Uh, and of course my trusty anorak. And I've got these, my latest acquisition. Really big gloves, proper waterproof ones as well. So I had trouble on a previous South Downs Way hike where um, the rain ran off my sleeves onto the gloves and soaked them and then I got really cold hands. So. So I uh, spent a bit of money, it's 45 quid. These are what, seal skins with a Z. I'm not sure I approve. Um, partly they're so expensive because they're the, only, the largest ones I could find. I really do have very massive hands. So uh, finding gloves is a problem, same with shoes and boots. So uh, I've got, I'll have those on most of the day as well. I'll have to take them off to use the camera because they're not very tactile, but uh, yeah. And I've got a thermos of hot coffee as usual. I've got uh, a couple of packets of sandwiches and crisps and I've brought some jelly babies with me. I mean, since I've been dieting, I've been trying not to bring whole bags of sweets with me on these treks. I don't really need them normally, but today I think some sort of high glucose quick release type sweets would be a good thing. Just to keep me fueled for the day. Just to make sure I don't drop into uh, unthinking hypothermia or whatever. So yeah, time to head on again. Don't stop too long. Look, fresh molehills. I mean, I know for a fact it was snowing last night, so that's probably in the last, oh, I don't know, last six hours or so. See them sticking out like sore thumbs all up the uh, side there. I tell you, it really is bushcraft easy mode today. I should be looking forward to doing some expert tracking. Okay, uh, a car. And look, another car, both of them on one wheel. What have we got? We've got uh, scuffed... That's filled in since last night. These are fresh. 
some kind of trainer or boot probably a trainer with that pattern so at least one person's proceeded before me but i think oh there's a bird that uh that's probably a condor yeah almost certain of it and again i don't think that was today that's slightly filled in with snow car so there's only been one person along here before me today so far that's good not expecting to have a busy old time like at Eastbourne today. <laughs> this is, it, these paths go nowhere interesting in the best of times, apart from the scenery, and so probably the dog walkers, and that'd be it, really. Yeah, just one set of fresh footprints through here today. What am I leaving? Look at that. Oof. Big chunky markers. Yeah. Uh, quite a split footed gate too. I wonder what that is. I think that's a sort of survival technique on the snow. It's not terribly slippery, but you can't just go running along here willy-nilly as it were. And look, here comes the sun. Yeah, that'll start melting today. It's going to get to about four degrees today, even with the snow, so that probably, oh, this will start melting today. So it's a better opportunity right now to get some Get some looking in on this. Yeah, good. Yeah, so, not sure what time it is. Let's get a camera mode that shows the time as well. About 10 ish, I expect. And I'm just leaving the village of Dummer, which is a real place, is where um, Sarah Ferguson, uh, wife, ex wife, Prince Andrew, mother of Beatrice and Eugenie. Uh, yeah, it came from these here parts. I remember being up here during the, during the royal wedding. God, that was a long time ago. We were a bunch of uh, small, small plucky kids on BMXs at the time. Uh, and local news sent a TV crew to the local pub and they had a big old pageant and things. Yeah, climby, I am very old. So, what have we got around here? Lots of livestock standing forlornly. Well, they're donkeys over there, I think. Oh, you're all right. You're made of leather and you've got loads of wool and things. There you go. Sheep don't care. Chickens there, clustering together for warmth, by the looks of it. Rather free range. Yeah. They've had a fair bit here. I tell you, I was walking through the village and there's like um, sort of drifts on top of cars that are like 30 or 40 centimetres deep. So, what's this? So, <laughs> this is where I'm going next anyway. And uh, there appears to be some kind of... Very tall snow type obstruction there. I suspect might be man-made. Remnants of a hill fort or something. Well, here we go. Off the off. This is the path. This is the trail. We've had one person through here the other way, I think. And it seriously is. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's looking like nearly a foot deep. <laughs> Mixing my measurements. So uh, yeah, this is going to be the uh, the real challenge of the day. Is essentially unbroken trails through about a foot of snow. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just gone straight into a hole that's quite deep, and it's going to be a lot like that through there. I mean, coming through the village was fine, because they had snow ploughs through, and it's roads anyway, cars pushing it all down and stuff. But now I'm striking off into the uh, proper polar wilderness along uh, the Wayfarer's Walk. And this is going to be some pretty hard going, which makes me start to wonder if my, my 16 mile itinerary was an achievable goal. Still, maybe this is just a bit of wind-exposed hillside that got a lot of snow. Maybe it's not this bad all the way through. You can see in the field there, you can see the tops of shoots and stuff, so it can't be that deep all the way through. I think this, this path is just, this hilltop has caused some sort of natural thundling of the snow. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to... Let's, uh, let's see, if we can, see how far we can get anyway. Oh gosh, yes, look, here we go, there's the ground. So if you just look at that scraped bit there, and there's an overhang of about... Yeah, my foot is, by coincidence, more or less exactly 12 inches long, so that is a foot deep snow drift, <laughs> which is the path. And yeah, look, someone's, I think it's possibly kids have built some kind of wall or proto igloo thing up here. Whee, deep push, deep push, deep push. Glad this is why I wore the waterproof trousers. Oh, okay, this is starting to seem like less and less of a good idea. Yeah, here we go, no wind did this. <laughs> ah, we got a section of wall here. Odd chunks built up. They obviously didn't get the uh, slopage right for a roof, but it's a, it's a serviceable defensive pillbox. 
to repel people coming up the hill. God. Yeah, I think I just run up to my shin in one of those uh, drifts up there on the way through. I'm hoping it doesn't get much deeper than that because I'm not sure I'm prepared for a proper actual polar trek. <sighs> yeah, I might make for slow going. We'll see how far we get. I mean, at no point on this trek am I more than like 15 miles from home and about two miles from a bus. So, uh, we'll just have to see how we get on. Dog walkers have made it up and down here, so I'm sure I can. Ah, <sighs> fuck oh, that for a game of soldiers. <sighs> so I've, uh, I've basically bailed from the path and I'm now in the field. Which is technically trespassing, but I don't think I'm doing much more damage to these crops than the uh, <laughs> May frost and snow is. But yeah, I see the first uh, casualty abandoned there. See the snow up to the windows there. I think the windows are broken as well. It might have already been abandoned before the snow hit it. Yeah, the windows are all smashed. Don't imagine the snow did that. That's probably just driven up here by some oiks and abandoned before the weather hit. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's weird. So that path runs between those two hedges, normally quite pleasant, slightly concreted thing, the farm track. It's knee deep in the snow, and I have very tall knees. And you can see the drift there, peaked behind the car. The car, the sort of shadow of the wind with the car made on the on the uh, on the field here, and the wind carved peaks of drift there. But it's something about those hedges and that path that seems to form a massive trap for the snow to actually settle, rather than be just carry on blown across the field to the far edge, which makes it really hard going if you stay on the actual path. Out here on the field, it's well, it's not even not even two centimetres deep because it just gets pushed all the way across. I imagine that far that far hedge has got some deep drifts. So that's something to bear in mind. Try and work out where the wind shadow is because that's where the drifts form. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Oh god, that car's been totally smashed up. I reckon this must have been there a while. Yeah. All right. Onward. I'll keep going. I'm th and the, the old waterproof leggings are mostly effective. I mean, my boots are basically waterproof. But obviously my normal trousers aren't, so... I don't really want cold, wet feet. That would be a bad thing for today. Yeah, interesting. Now, right, onward. Come on, new gloves, you can do a touch. Ah, look at that. Wind-carved dunes of snow. Such an alien landscape. I know this, this, part, this part of the world pretty well and I've seen nothing like this. I, mean, I can't remember the last time the snow settled here. I'm talking like five years or so. Something in that order. I mean, occasionally you get a bit of snowfall, but it never stays, it never settles. And I figured what with the climate and everything and El Nino and global warming and all of that, I thought we'd probably seen the snow, back snow for good. But it just goes to show how much we owe the Gulf Stream the big uh, channel of warm water that runs from the Caribbean up to uh, up to the UK across the Atlantic brings damp moist and relatively warm air with it so why we get so much so much rain all the time and we can't stop banging on about rain our national obsession and why this kind of landscape and scene is almost unheard of this far north I mean we're about level with Nova Scotia and Toronto and stuff like that and uh, and we have a climate that's generally more like Northern Europe and New York and that sort of thing. New York gets crazy snow and we don't, so yeah, I think the, the day after tomorrow can teach us a lot. <sighs> so the sun's coming out now and I didn't bring any sunglasses and I'm, I'm starting to worry about snow blindness, which <laughs> admittedly I am not prepared for at all. So I probably should have done a bit more research, it is quite bright. <laughs> I'm have to sort of just, uh, I can see through that enough to walk by, so I might just end up being a complete wrapped up mummy for the day. Uh, yeah, fortunately I'm going that way next, along that uh, relatively uh, clear bit of concreting, tarmacking and gravel. And then down that edge of the field is going to be interesting. So uh, yeah, speak to you again soon. Ah, still in my winter wonderland. The wind's picking up a bit now. The sun's gone in as well, so it makes it all a bit colder. Mind you, I'm pretty much okay for temperature if I keep going, certainly. Um, I had to take my gloves off and open the coat a bit because I was hiking along in the uh, getting too hot earlier. 
And then I stopped to have a coffee and some jelly beans and I'm a bit cold again now. So I think the message is don't stop <laughs> ever. Just keep moving. But I think I'm wearing the right number of trousers, uh, which is nice. Uh, I just came from up there as you can see the drifts. I think I'm the only set of boot prints along here today. There's me. I think there's some some that went across and down that they filled in overnight, I think. So yeah, but no one else out here. And up and over there then it goes on to a kind of ridgeway with a with a uh, eastward facing hedge. Which means I suspect the path's going to be quite drifty as well. And it's quite exposed for about two two miles or so. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Spectacular views, I imagine. But, uh, well, we'll see when we get there. But yeah, oh, I don't know what the temperature is at the moment. That wind's picked up a bit though, it's starting to feel a bit cooler. But I'm, I'm optimistic, hopeful. I don't think anything I've planned today is impossible. I just need to be careful with the drifts, go round into fields if need be. I mean, you, know, you can see the field there. I mean, that's just been recently ploughed, so that'll probably be hard going, whatever. But that one's still fallow, I think. And you, there's hardly any snow settled on the exposed bits away from the hedges. Mind you, see the hedge in the distance with the little peaks there. Yeah, it's all about wind shadow and snow dunes today. It's good. Good, good, good. Must be getting on for about 11, I expect. Uh, yeah, I have to, probably going to just eat, eat dinner, eat lunch on the run, really, on the move, because I don't want to sit around or stand around for too long, because that's when it gets you, that's when the cold seeps in. But uh, if I keep moving, it's, it's quite pleasant. In fact, a little bit too hot in, at times. I hear this oh, quite powerful smell of either wood smoke or coal smoke. I think probably wood at someone's fire. It's quite a way away there. There's no houses near here for quite some distance. So I knew that one. I'm having a stroke. That's burnt toast, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, yeah, I can't stop standing chatting to you. I'll freeze to death. Okay, it's getting ridiculous. Check out these drifts and dunes, that's, uh, yeah. See, that's about, uh, yeah, that's about thigh high on me. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Really unusual. It's the wind shadows and trees and so on, you can see the gaps. Interesting footprints as well, little footprints there, they're like uh, cat size, they're probably fox. So they're sort of Go in there and then there's a big sort of thing and then a leap. And you can just see on the far of June, must have, leaped, must have jumped about a metre and then caught the end here and leapt across. And then trotted on through the, uh, through the snow. Yeah, no people have come through here today. Because they're all not insane. In fact, they've gone around in the field. <laughs> yeah, it's like the path itself is probably the worst place to be today. And you're trotting along. Sort of directional push in there. I can't remember, don't know which way he's going, probably facing, yeah, facing that way, probably. Scampering along, negotiating the dunes as best he can. Long gone by now, I imagine. Those were made today, though, probably the early hours of this morning. Oh, God, look at that. I have to start vaulting something. I am going to have to bail and cut into the field, I think. It's the sensible solution. Unlike foxes, I have a reasoning intellect. Like they say, foxes are quite cunning. Not cunning enough to go out into the field, mind you. I expect they're afraid of condors, so, uh, you know, it's all relative. Here we are in the field, and yeah, it's about two or three centimetres. So, uh, yeah, starting to get my fill of a wintry landscape, get some uh, extent of the uh, nature of the beast from the east. What a stupid name that was. I take something from Scandinavian mythology. They got all the cool stories, the good names. Ragnarok. Uh, the wolf eats the sun and the ice giants conquer the world. See, that's a, that's a kind of thing. I mean, Snowmageddon and Snowpocalypse. I mean, Armageddon and Apocalypse is, to me, are always uh, rather fiery experiences, I imagine. You know, lava, rains of fire, volcanoes. This is clearly a Ragnarok. Ah, beast from the east, I ask you. Oh, just galumped through some pretty deep stuff there. No one else has been this way at all today. Because, yeah, as, as previously illustrated, not insane. There we go. 
Oh, what massive idiot came clumping through there? It's about it is knee deep there. This one is waist deep. I went around that one. Let's see the bits falling off there, mini avalanche. <laughs> Some fascinating tracks. So I'm pretty sure I'm seeing foxes, baby badgers. Something a bit bigger, certainly. And then there's some small, some small dainty ones, which might be rabbits. I just don't know. <laughs> Quite a lot of birds. Little three-pronged display webbed feet thing there. It's hard to see the contrast with the phone, I'm sure. Yeah, and then me gumping backwards and forwards. And all this just passes unseen normally. And these little creatures going about their secret lives. And they can see it all. Pretty much all of this stuff would have happened last night. Something dragging there, sort of slide, 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 slide. Very small little feet there with a drag. Could be a rabbit. A hopping gate, perhaps. Yeah. This here is some sort of disused lime pit. Some sort of ancient quarry for lime. So the old chalk there. Used in um, something, something, something process. I don't know. Brick making? Can't remember. Cement, perhaps. Yeah. Would have been used as a tip as well for a bit and now just abandoned. It's uh, quite a long way from anywhere out here. Look at this. Look at the horizon. Grey. Grey and black. A monochrome landscape. All very lowry. Ah, yeah, we just carry on down that ridge to the far end. That's about another mile or two of uh, drifts and dunes. Uh, but it looks like I can make an easy go of it along the field edge here anyway, so that'll be right. And then basically you go far enough this way, it gets to uh, another road, and then I turn left and start round on the uh, bottom loop of the leg, and then head north somewhere over there, back up to uh, Amazing Stoke from, uh, from the south there. I would get the map out, but I've got nowhere to put it, and I don't want to sit down in this, so uh, I'll have to just, uh, I don't know, Google for it. You clever people. Wow, look at that, frozen surf, that frozen wave of snow there, look. Sort of peaked, uh, whoa, God, it's getting deep. Ah. God, I'm just ruining this landscape with my big cloddy feet. Look at these shapes, astonishing. And they seem to form in the lee of hedges, yeah, because I mean, in the middle of the fields, the snow doesn't even land, it just keeps getting blown. But the, the hedge gives it a bit of shelter so it can settle. It forms these amazing shapes. I don't know if the white balance and contrast is even letting you see that, but it's like a giant sort of frozen wave just about to crash. All carved by wind and nature. Lots of birds are hopping along looking at it all. Ah, it's a really amazing landscape. And it's, you know, at once it's so familiar because obviously I'm here a lot and, and yet really different, really transformed. It's weird, almost like giant funguses, perhaps. <laughs> Dunes of snow. It's not what you expect. Certainly not in March, anyway. What's wrong with the world? But yes, I mean, this is basically what Britain would be like all the time if it wasn't a golf stream. Probably much deeper than this as well, I expect. More persistent. Ah. So, uh, don't you people pollute the Gulf Stream or turn it off or whatever it is you do with your your bitcoins I don't know <laughs> sometimes I feel the world's getting away from me a bit right onward I'm going to freeze yeah, find myself in a wintry copse just off the path uh, beach uh, ash no beach maybe I don't know <laughs> For someone who likes the countryside so much, I know surprisingly little about it. Big old trees though, been here a while. Artificially planted, they're all in rows, more or less. This weather's come as rather a shock, I think. Here we go, this is some low-lying uh, low bushes of it as well. You see the leaves. They're looking distinctly uh, shriveled. Temperatures of, uh, I don't know if that's... Uh, Done lasting harm, but yeah, you know, the, the sugar beet I've been walking through there looked been looking a bit dried and shriveled. So I don't know if this is uh, 
it's a massive calamity for the agricultural industry or whether it's just uh, one of those things a bit of a shock and move on i suspect the place is resilient enough don't know though one sharp frost can often destroy a harvest depends on the time still mind you a lot of plants need frost to, to germinate it makes the seeds wake up and, so who knows <laughs> There you go, <laughs> bit of agricultural insight there. Uh, do you like this woods though, just an inexplicable little miniature forest on the, on the top of the hill there. A little windbreaker habitat for wildlife. Not so much snow in here, yeah, still get a bit. Uh, I need to press on down there and then onward and onward really. Keep going, doing all right so far, the jelly babies are holding out. Should be lunchtime soon, surely. Life has given up, it's utterly pristine except my own clod hopping feet there. It's really firm. Cracks a little on the top. Okay, yeah, next one. Uh, we can do this. It's all about thinking light. Mind over matter. If I can partially telekinesis this myself, I will, I'll weigh almost nothing and can stand on the snow. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and here we go. And there's the drop off. Oh! <laughs> Oh wow, right, well I didn't drop the camera, that's good. So look, there you go. So there's me walking along the top, foot, 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 about an inch into it, and then zoom, and there it is. And it is actually about thigh deep, that, yeah. <laughs> Astonishing. Uh, right, so this all looks a bit easier going. Not actually that deep at all. So I'm just gonna put the phone away and have a sandwich. I'll talk to you later. Oh, you gotta see this. So I'm just coming off that field because I thought I'd not bother using the path because it's quite hard work. And um, I was right. So um, yeah. <laughs> just as a sort of reference, um, I don't know if you can see that. That's, uh, that's about level with my head. I'm 185 centimetres tall, so <laughs> that's a six foot snowdrift right there. Then I'll make too much noise or it'll uh, come down on me. Yeah, I mean, look at this path downhill. I mean, I've done some sort of thigh deep yomping a bit earlier on and that warm me out, so I thought I'm gonna just stick myself in the field. And it's just as well because look at that, that's the path. There's no way, There's no way getting through there. Not without a shovel and like two afternoons work. So yeah, I think I might just carry on using the side of the field. Well, I could tun I could tunnel into that and hide for warmth against the uh, horrific snows, which have stopped, frankly. So you know, there's even a bit of blue sky up there. That's mad. It just doesn't happen in this country. We don't know what to do. We can't process it. it just sends us crazy. So uh, yeah, let's get back up and out on this field. <laughs> Hey. Oh, I keep stamping the snow off. It's alright as long as the stuff doesn't stick. That's when it starts to melt and get wet. Yeah, so it's a bit bad. Ah, so, my sandwich, it was green bacon and jelly jam. And to be honest, I didn't enjoy it. Jelly jam was on the desktop side. Just rather than uh, warming. Yeah, so 
So uh, and I finished off the jelly babies as well. I've got some crisps, so I'll be all right. All right, down to there, which I think is the main road from uh, Amazing Stoke to Oxford, somewhere down there. I need to cross that and find the Ox Road on the other side, stop making my way back towards home. <sighs> it's about half twelve, one o'clock-ish. Sunset's about six, I think now. It's getting, not getting later again, which is nice. You know, I definitely don't want to be out here in the dark. <laughs> oh, onward. Yeah, my first walk history there. Yeah, this is Brown Candover, I think. I'm a bit lost, actually. I've kind of fallen off the bottom page of the map I brought with me. It's only a little bit. So I'm, I'm flying blind until I can get back onto the other sheet, which I think is north and then across to the east a bit. Look at that country, uh, country church there, graveyard, and uh, here we have a cricket green. It's all, it's all very midsummer murders. So I need to uh, find a way. Right, well, that's the main road the other side of that green, which takes back up to Basingstoke and down to Oxford. So I need to go north along it a bit till I reach Chilton Candover. I'm in the wrong Candover, you see. And then I think there's a, a road on the right that will take me over to this ox drove where I can pick up the other side of the map I've got and not be lost anymore which is good but I think I'm at the far extent of today's walking anyway so good halfway feeling fine feeling all right despite the uh, <laughs> hip deep snow drifts and stuff anyway this should all be a bit easier going until we get up onto the hills again in the distance so good right uh, I've had to stop and have a look at the map so I've cooled down too much at the moment so I'm not going to stop again but uh, I'll probably need to have a coffee again at some point Let's get some walking. We're going to be trudging along a B road now, so that shouldn't provide any uh, technical problems. Good times. Let's keep moving. Ah, coffee stop. There it is. The stuff of life. It's by coffee alone, I set my feet in motion. My bag of crisps. Ooh, car coming. I'm on a road. This is quite uh, well cleared. From person going about their business. Tell you what, something very large and agricultural has come through here and not taken no for an answer. Look at that. <laughs> I don't think that's even salt. I think that's just been bulldozed. Snow plow or some sort of farm farm implement with a bucket on the front. Whatever, done the job. They don't muck about out here, they don't care. Some people were ready for it. Some people are always ready for it, I suppose. Oh, yeah, it's, that, it's the 3rd of March, I had to check, and look at it, this is insane. It's a winter landscape, look at that, over there on the end of that field, I mean, you know, I can't tell the scale there or anything at all, that's got to be at least uh, two metres tall, that particular snowbank. Maybe that's where the bucket tipped it all, don't know. Ah. So yeah, I'm still not on the map yet, I reckon if I follow this lane, now we've left the main road there, follow this lane up to here. It should come to some sort of five-way junction thing, one of one, one of which ways might be the Ox Drove that I'm after. A uh, named footpath local to the region, which should take me most of the way back to where I need to be. Um, but I need to connect to the end of it, and I'm still not on the bottom of my map yet. I should have brought the Winchester and uh, Alton sheet, which I forgot to do. I didn't think I was roaming quite that far. Ah, so I'm not that worried. I've been out and about these parts a lot, usually by car come out this way to do a bit of astrophotography now and then as well. Um, <laughs> no, because there's very little light pollution out here. We're quite far away from most major towns here. Far enough away for there to be a decent go at the sky. If it's not cloudy. Oh, I keep hearing those bloody shotguns. Man, those pheasants never get a break. I don't think there is a season for pheasants. I think they're if they cop it all year round. Poor things. <laughs> oh, right, is that cold enough to drink yet? These thermal slices are amazing. I have to prepare the flask the night before I come out because it's too hot to drink if I just do it as do it before I leave in the morning. It's astonishing. Oops, some sort of plane over there, I think. Oh yeah, that, there it is, straight up. I don't even know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah there it is. No idea what it is, where it is, what it's going. I had an app on the phone, which is really clever. 
I can't remember what it's called now, Skynet or Sky Map or something, Sky Radar. And you point, basically, once it uses the phone's GPS and position and tracking and stuff, and also connects online to publicly available air traffic control databases. And you can basically point it at the plane in the sky and it will bracket it, and then it tells you what, what airline it is, where it's going, and all it's in, it's, its aircraft number, and all sorts of stuff. Fascinating, if a little bit creepy stalker. Marvellous what they can do nowadays. Alright, I need to finish this and get moving. See you soon. <laughs> yep, <laughs> got to the top of that, that hill. Yeah, let's just have a quick look at that. Go around here. Look at that. That is at least that is as tall as I am, yeah. <laughs> oh. Polar snowfields. Yeah, something's just gone full days and through here. Absolutely worth coming out today. Look at it, magnificent. And yeah, it's starting to turn to slush. Snow's ill-received cousin. Yeah, that's, that's what most people think of when they think of this kind of weather because all they ever see is the road. And it just gets turned into this horrible stuff. It nasty colour. It sounds all slithery. And. Um, has a tendency to freeze when it's impacted if it gets cold the next night, forming a kind of uh, lethal skid pan on most roads. Yeah, see, that's all right. And that's not. So, you know, yin and yang, something like that. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't worry. I think by Monday this will all be gone. It's going to be about nine degrees during the week next week. Can't see it sticking around much beyond that. Rare opportunity. Uh, the road goes over on and on. <clears throat> so yeah, I just left the road on to this uh, restricted byway. It's like a bridle way, but you can get like a jeep along it maybe. Or a motorbike, I'm not sure. Horse and cart, something like that. Must know the differences by now. And I don't know, it looks alright. And I think if I follow it long enough, I'll, find, I'll come across something I recognise from one of my other walks. That's my plan at the moment. I'm having to sort of wing it somewhat because I'm still not on my map as far as I can tell. Which is uh, no cause for alarm. So, uh, yeah, it's getting on for about three o'clock, I imagine. Plenty of daylight, and at any rate, it can't be more than like ten miles away from the supermarket car park where I started. So. But yes, yeah, no car to come back to this time, that's nice. I'll just get to the supermarket, get on a bus and work my way back to my house, which is nice. And that's not even one of these like long distance buses. Because the thing is, I thought originally this weekend I'd try going from like uh, somewhere, well, I start at my house and walk to the nearest other train station in some provincial village or whatever, but I didn't really want to risk the idea of trains today or long distance bus journeys because. Uh, <laughs> They all just gave up. They got to Wednesday and, and threw the towel in, most of them. No, we're, not just, we're just not doing anything. We're all, we're all going to bed. So, uh, yeah, I didn't think there'd be much chance of relying on a train a person in the distance. Haven't seen any other hikers today. I think a few dog walkers near the, near the town, but... Uh, I don't know, movement, maybe. Uh, actually, I'll tell a lie. I've just passed a horse, horse person. Uh, one on a horse there, coming the other way. Down that uh, slushy lane. Also had a blanket on, but otherwise seemed to be enjoying itself. <laughs> I think I need a blanket, really. I don't need a blanket, I'm fine. Getting too hot, if anything, at least uh, slogging through the snow. Put more effort putting in than usual, certainly. I shall be super fit at this rate, or dead. She's off and away. Alright, let's see where this goes anyway. It might, might go somewhere useful. Yeah, I'm going to declare this a useful path that goes somewhere I want to go. If I wish for it hard enough, maybe it'll happen. Tell you what, it is a lot easier going than the paths I've been on so far. Relatively flat and clear all the way. No uh, waist-high dunes to, to slog through. I think it's because it's an east-west path. This is facing east that way. And so all that, all the wind of the last couple of days bringing the snow would have just blown it all straight down the path rather than banking it up in wind shadows. I mean, if you look through the hedge here, 
you can sort of see uh, a whole range of perpendicular exotic dunes there on the perpendicular hedge. So uh, I think I've done some weather science, and, or, or like aerodynamic science or something. One of the sciences, science is great, there's so many to choose from. But yeah, so as long as I keep heading east along this path there won't be any kind of massive impediments. Also lots of people have been along here today. Look at all that, I mean there's oof, eight or nine different sets of footprints along here. Along with dog footprints too. Don't know about mountain bikes or anything like that. I haven't seen much in the way of bikes today. It's because they're all big jessies, scared of the cold. But yeah, so this is just well travelled, so that many people can't be wrong, it must go somewhere interesting. But I'm just quite liking not having to slog through knee high snowdrifts, so I'm going to follow this, see where it goes. <laughs> Good news, my hunch about that byway was correct. I found me on the map and know where I'm going now, which is good. So yeah, I reckon I'm two thirds of the way around. It's good, I'm feeling good, feeling optimistic. Tired, but I can make it. And look at this, another majestic frozen dune sea type thing. Trying to do a slow pan. I've never won any awards for camera work. <laughs> as, as you probably have guessed by now if you're with me this far. Look at the shapes. Built up of a multitude of tiny grains deposited over that's 48 hours. Wind blown shapes, same exactly the same process that forms dunes and deserts. And I suppose waves on the sea. Although that's a bit faster. And they'll be utterly gone within about 24 hours, 48 hours. Be like they were never here. Just to look like that instead. <laughs> Astonishing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm feeling good. I was, you know, keep stopping to read maps and stopping to look at the camera and stuff. So it's getting a bit cold. So I probably ought to just keep pad keep pounding on this. Not so bad if you keep moving. There we go. Some some other fools gone shin deep into this one. Probably on purpose. It's not difficult to go around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This has seen a lot of foot traffic. This path. A lot of people have been through today. Big old hikes, enjoying the enjoying the snow. I say it's something it's it's lovely to experience at leisure. But uh, well, look at there, ah, hiking poles. If I don't miss my mark, sticks. Proper hikers. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, it's in, it's nice to enjoy this kind of thing for, for pleasure and leisure. But probably not that much help if you're trying to get to work or <laughs> can't get any food because the roads are impassable. Yeah, I sometimes think about hiking sticks, but I don't know. It's a it's a short short way between a hiking stick and a walking cane, isn't it? I expect they'll need them eventually. So far, so good, though. Ah, if I don't wear my knees out anyway, maybe that's it. Maybe these people with the hiking sticks have just done it so often their knees aren't that great anymore. So I've got that to look forward to. Look at this interesting pattern of wind-blown dust and mud. In the kind of stippled effect there. Yeah. Some sort of footprints through here. What have we got there? Is that rabbit? So they've been filled in a bit. They were not, they're not today's. Don't know. I have really no idea what any of these, these uh, footprints, are, these animal footprints are like. Ah. The wind's picking up clearly. Yeah, less jibber jabber, more walking, more not freezing to death. Ugh. Day 57, supply is running low. We had another stretch of impacted drift snow across the byway. Uh, the path has turned, and there's a gappy, shadowy, gappy, shadowy hedge leading to some spectacular dunes along the way. Uh, I'm worried about walking across. We already lost young Apsley. I actually stood on about six foot of impacted snow here, uh, which seems to be holding my weight. It sort of it swings around about. It depends. It, ironically, the taller it is, the more likely it is to be solid when you stand on the top and not drop you through it. Ah, all the footprints I'm following turn, literally stopped, turned round, and went back at one point, which was uh, a bit ominous. It just carries on like this for a while. 
out of enjoying the adventure and daring do of it all, certainly, but I could just lay it down to that thing. hard work. Although, you know, pretty damn cool as well. Some adventure time. I do want to get home alive. So, uh, yeah. Tune a bit. Uh, still on the ox drove. Uh, some big, uh, big jeep or something has been through here today. Today as well, I think, looking at the ice. I sharply defined edges on the tyre tread tracks. It's probably sometime in the last couple of hours. Uh, and that's quite ominous because they got this far <laughs> and they gave up. Ploughed straight to this snow drift and presumably reversed all the way back. So, uh, and that's where I've got to go yonder. So, it's another ridge top uh, adventure. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's sort of bedded in here and just couldn't get any further by the looks of it. Someone got out, had a bit of a wander around, went about that far up, came up, came back. And then they buggered off back the way they came, I think, down to that road. I, on the other hand, am the kind of idiot who needs to carry on straight through all that. Mind you, the fence, uh, the uh, yeah, the field doesn't seem to be fenced, so that's quite an option. Might just try that instead. Because I think my feet are starting to get a bit chilly, what with the uh, continual snowing of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, there we go. I don't want frostbite, because no one will believe me, frankly. It was. You lost your toast to frostbite in Hampshire in March. I know, I look like a prize idiot. A prize idiot with no toes. Which is bad. So, yes, I'm going to try the field. Which looks uh, basically flat with perhaps less than half a centimetre of snow on it. It's really weird seeing this all today. This, this strange wind shadow effect. You think they're putting hedges and trees along the sides of footpaths, you know, byways and whatever, would afford them some sort of shelter, but if anything it does the worst, it makes it worse. Footpath through the middle of there would have no problem at all. Yeah, a windbreak all right, but that just lets the snow build up. There you go, onward. So somehow it's now unbelievably also raining. <laughs> we really do have every weather here now except fish. Um, and I'm quite hopeful there too. Still on the ox drove, still plodding along. It's that sort of late three, late third, three quarters of the way round when I start to get a bit sullen and trudgy. But that's okay. Doing well, getting there. And we're coming up on a road junction which I recognise and which definitely means I'm on the right track and not far to go. Ah, and uh, some, some very large jeep type things been up here, which has blasted all of the mid drifts, which is good. So fairly nice steady downhill to the, to the road, along the road. Quite a bit of road to do next. And then up, that will take me to near a village called Bradley, if you're following along with a map. Um, at which point I might try and have a cup of coffee. It's kind of, kind of, kind of limited by places I can hang my bag, you know, like off a tree or a fence post or something, because I don't want to set it down in this snow. But yes, yeah, so it's definitely coffee break time. I don't know, it must be getting on for about three. I think it was three about two hours ago as well. So I've totally lost track of time as well as space. Um, but yeah, it's all going fine. This is fine. No, it's, it really is fine. It's great. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's nice to get out and see something different and unusual. Every time I go past a field with like a east-facing hedge, there's a massive row of weird snow sculpt, wind, wind sculpt dunes beyond the back. So it's a fascinating day. But yes, I have been out here in, in the summer and it is nice in summer. <laughs> uh, anyway, carrying on. Uh, I've been picking up now. Bit of a, bit of a steady old uh, breeze there. It's making it all a bit chilly. So I'm, I'm off the Ox Drove onto a little bit of country lane here. It's Bradley down there. I'm not going there, I'm going up there. Next, this is the old crossroads along with their SUVs, and I think they're probably justified today. 
Yeah. Bucket of grit there. <laughs> Don't know if anybody actually went and nearly had a go at it, but it uh, looks like someone's blasted through there with a plough or something anyway, so another long stretch of country road, so pretty easy going. Came off the bottom of that ox grove there down to a little barn, stopped and had a cup of coffee, and as I stood there, four, four, uh, must be one, four, five cross trial bikes came blasting down there just from where I'd been from behind. Good job they didn't catch me on the trail, that would have been awkward. The mess, snow everywhere. So no, they would have uh, done the whole Oxtro, which is from pretty bloody good going if, if some of the drifts I was stood on that were six foot high were in their route. Maybe they went around the fields as well. They looked pretty wet, but uh, seemed to have enjoyed themselves. I think they were shouting and chatting loudly, I think they're off home now, so <laughs> end of a fine day. Yeah, I've seen, seen occasional mo motorbike tracks through some of the snow. So, uh, keep moving, keep moving. Look at this. Ah, oh, I'd conservatively estimate five miles to go, maybe. So, we'll see. Probably four, perhaps. It's exactly. I know the route well, though. I've, I've come, I come through this way quite a bit when I'm doing my local little town to town hikes on, on a spring, summer, and autumn Saturday. So yeah, just head up there and uh, negotiate the route through, get to the top of uh, Farley Hill, which overlooks the south of Basingstoke, and there's some spectacular views of uh, amazing Stoke from up there, and then down to the supermarket and done. So that's all good. It's all good. Lovely slow, slow afternoon sun coming in now, that winter sort of, that winter golden look to it all. And the snow melting quite rapidly now, so I see the field's pretty much clear of it. Doesn't take much. The temperature's, you know, one or two degrees now. The sun just keeps beating down on it. I was trying to work out as I was walking whether photosynthesis gives off heat. Because is that why the green bits clear quicker than the tram lines and the mud in between? Photons uh, turned into sugars, carbon photosynthesis, leaf screen, gives off oxygen. Does it cause heat to happen? Are plants marginally hotter than the surroundings? I don't know. And I can't check Wikipedia because I'm busy using the phone to talk to you. I guess I'll never know. Yeah, I was just getting used to uh, trudging along a nice clear path and uh, now I've got to go up there. <laughs> uh, that's Moundsmere Manor on the horizon there, Moundsmere House, whatever. So I need to go up and past that and down the other side and then there's a big long haul up to Farley Wallop and then from there down to um, Sainsbury's. So yeah, the end is in sight. My legs are starting to get a bit tired, as is often the way at this point in proceedings. Now I've got to slog through these bloody drifts. There's going to be quite a few footpaths that haven't had any jeeps or things along for now, I think. So yeah, this is the hard bit, getting onto the, uh, the last section. Once I get to the village of Farley Wallop, I'll probably be fine because that's all roads from there back. So yeah, here we go, wish me luck. A bit of uh, crevasse climbing. Uh, I can do it, I'm a winner. Uh, sun's gone in a bit, getting a bit cold. Oh, look, the wind's dropped off as well, so it's cooler, it's a bit stiller. It's nice. Another row of fantastic shapes. The path's actually in there, but it's quite narrow and, and it's inundated, so uh, nope. I'm on the field again. But look at these. Coming close, let me look underneath. Sort of sculpted overhang, underhang there. Different densities of snow, I guess. Some of it melts faster than others. You can see a drip dropping off there. The sun's been beaming on this side all day. So on and off. There it goes. It's sort of been eaten away underneath. This big underhang type of thing. It's dropping off. Astonishing. That's stalactites and stalagmites forming inside the cave. And look, it's a, I guess some sort of crack formed in the uh, in the structure, which has formed a little mini crevasse. It's a tiny, tiny land of adventure. Tiny, tiny explorers manhandling tiny, tiny sledges across the top. Astonishing. Who knows what, what treasures lie within yon cave? Very, very small ones, I imagine. Look 
there's another one. Hundreds of intricate and multiple varied forms. All put there by the wind. Random chance and happenstance and thermodynamics. Fantastic stuff. So down this hill to the bottom, then it's a long slow climb up to a big hill, then I climb that and I'm on top of the world and down to home. So uh, yeah, doing well. Oh, look at these, there's another one. And look at that, look at the, uh, you see, so you see this one here, this big waveform. That goes up and into the thing and onto the path, so <laughs> there's no way, no way I'm going to get anywhere down there unless, no, is that footprints? Oh god, yeah, there's footprints in there, someone's had a go. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to have my work cut on the next path, so uh, I'm just going to take advantage of this easy to manage field border here. Oh, another one. Combination of sun melt as well, I think. The sun's been eroding this side, so it's all, I think the you know, stuff underneath has been collapsing, so it's all dropping down on top. A little bit slumped and it almost looks kind of liquidy, almost lava form, you know. Not the pristine shapes that were there this morning, I think. Yeah, look at that, the field's already clear enough. So transitory. Narrow window. Oh, there's a trough. Is it frozen over still? Yeah, yeah, big big hod of ice in there. Oh, right, gotta keep moving. Sun's not going down yet, but that cloud's making it cooler, so uh, yeah, keep moving, gloves back on. Not many pheasants are noisy. Oh, gee, they've got a lot to shout about, I think. Oh, so, yes, this is some sort of bridal way footpath thing. Goes up, up through this lovely wooded valley here. This is all private estates, uh, Portsmouth estates, I think, off of uh, Farley Wallop. But the uh, permissive bridal way runs through the middle of it. And it's, I always like this place. It's like very well maintained and uh, well looked after a bit of countryside. And a lovely walk through the place any time of year. I sometimes come down through here on my way south, on the way points south. I'm out hiking on my Saturdays. I think this this, uh, this, turn, this joins a road up at the top of here, a long slow climb, uh, a place, and I kid you not, called uh, Bedlam Bottom. Seriously, look it up on the map, don't take my word for it. And then from there I can get up to Farley Wallop, along a very steep but hopefully clear and salted road. It gets me to a crossroads on top of the Farley Hill, and then down from there to Hatch Warren and Sainsbury's. So yeah, about two, three miles now. Ah, this is just as well, because that is getting dark and cold. I think it's too early for sunset. I think the clouds just thickening over. I mean, it did say it was going to rain later today, so it's already been hitting some of that now. But you know, I'm <laughs> rain. <laughs> I'm also blizzards, me. So uh, I don't mind seeing that being a much of a problem. Ah, and I think I'm going to treat myself to some big old carrier bag of ready meals and, and unhealthy desserts and things tonight. <laughs> the diet be hanged. I think I'll be able to just a hot meal will be good. Coffee's been going well, still got some left, I'll have a bit more of that in a minute, I think. And, uh, you know, sandwiches. I'm not carrying a camping stove around with me, that would just be uh, excessive, to be honest. Hell, I didn't even take a stove with me on my coastal footpath thing for the week. Just too much hassle, pots and pans and washing up, and those horrible corned beef hash meals vacuum sealed in bags from the uh, dry to goods sections of supermarkets. Might as well just, you know, find pubs. <laughs> Oh, I could have found a pub today at a, at, a, at a point at lunchtime. I didn't see any today. There was one in Dummer right at the start, but it was a bit early. But the um, problem with the cold is, is alcohol doesn't help that at all. <laughs> Bad thing to be doing in this kind of temperatures and climate. I mean, this is a summer's day and I was just strolling my way across the countryside and stopping for a quick half would be a pleasurable thing. But uh, today it might just well kill me. So wait till I get home before I get, get boozed up. Oh. Here we go, the cycle path, and then uh, that's a bridal way and a footpath. I, think it's, I don't think you need the yellow one if you've already got a blue one, to be honest. I think footpath's implied. Still, there you go. Lovely. Keep moving. Losing daylight, people. Yeah, so, made it to the road I was speaking of. 
a little slopey hill there, but that's all water nicely uh, gritted and cleared. I'm going to wander up that road and follow it around. And road's all the way back now. That's the other end of that lovely uh, wooded valley. Gotta say, that's a bit hardcore. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was like an organised thing, you know, you've got to the middle of nowhere and a bunch of Land Rovers and set up a hide and, and beaters and things. I didn't realise you just, you know, <laughs> pull up to the side of the road and have at it. Yeah, good. I suddenly feel a lot less safe. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to head for the nearest busy metropolis where they don't do that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know, four o'clock probably, something like that. I need a watch, I suppose, because I can't use the phone to look at the time whilst I'm trying to tell you the time, you know? I don't know. <sighs> Taxi? <laughs> no, not me, mate. <sighs> no, I'm alright. I'm good, good for another couple of miles. Probably two to go now. <sighs> but yeah, it's getting dark. It's not that late, I don't think. It's just cloud, I think. So, there we go. A few spots of rain, I think, is that? Yeah. Oh, it's been a good day, though. My legs are nice and achy. Picked up a bit of a niggle on the inside of my upper thigh there. Something about there, it's uh, twinged a bit, but uh, it's okay, I can walk through it. And the toes are all a bit wet, but I suppose that's to be expected with the, uh, the snow. That'd be right. So I should, be, I should be soaking in a bath within two hours, I'm certain of it. So that'll be all right. Clean dry socks, amaretto in hand, living the high life. Yeah, looking forward to it. Right, onward. Let's make that dream a reality. Yes, we can. So, made it to the crossroads. Yep, there we go. Coming out of there, onto here. And guess where I need to go next? Down there, with that yellow big sign. Actually, that's that's fine. That's like from 8 o'clock to 5 in the morning on the 11th. And it's the 3rd today, so it's... Oh, they've put that in the middle of the road like that. Oh, well. <laughs> um, yeah, so who knows what I'm going to find when I go down there. But it's a very exposed ridgeline road, so it could be significant drifting, although I imagine it's probably been bulldozed. So, yeah, Garlic Lane. Okay, I didn't know it had a name. Apparently it does. I can see why they called it that, though, because in, in spring and summer you can get this really powerful aroma of wild garlic down that wooded lane there. It really hits you. It's quite not, not unpleasant, but uh, quite distinctive. So, yeah, Garlic Lane, why not? Ah, so, here comes the rain. Let's keep pushing on. And here we are, ta-da, Basingstoke. City of illusion, phantasm, possibility and dreams. And roundabouts. Actually, this is, this is not a good shot. <laughs> Although I would say that's probably quite representative. Ah, roundabouts. Basingstoke famous for it in the 80s. If you knew anything at all about Basingstoke, and that was fairly rare, uh, you knew it had a lot of roundabouts. I imagine that's been overtaken by many other cities that have roundabouts nowadays. That was in the 80s. Yeah. So yeah, I like roundabouts. I mean, traffic lights. Traffic lights is is a very authoritarian thing. This is this is the state saying you cannot be trusted with your freedom of movement. We will tell you when you can go and when you can stop because you can't be trusted. Whereas roundabouts, roundabouts say we as a community of egalitarian motorists will work together in harmony to for the good of all and sort our own affairs out with no intervention from central government. Um, but nowadays, what you seem to get mostly in Basingstoke is traffic lights on roundabouts. Uh, and at that point, I'm not quite sure what the metaphor's saying anymore. So there you go. This is not a good bit. Um, I was kind of hoping for a more of a, a view. It's often quite good. There's an interesting thing over there. Across the road, carefully. <laughs> Oh, you can't see that either. Jolly good. In those woods is an anaerobic digester. It's like a... I think you can see it better from the bottom of the hill. Giant white spheres, so, sort of reminiscent of the prisoner, uh, in which uh, lorry loads of uh, organic waste come and drop off for it so it can all mulch down and give off methane gas. I don't know whether they turn that into fertiliser or whether they burn it for electricity or something, but it's a very progressive green technology. It's very good. I approve. Here we go, look. Wild garlic. I was talking about that, and there's loads of it here. You see all these green shoots sticking up, vibrant green, vaguely, uh, vaguely triffid-like. Although they don't get much bigger than that. And I can, 
I'm just about to pick up a hint of it, although it's really not the season. And there's stuff's everywhere in there, in this bit of woods. So garlicky, they named the road after it. Uh, oh God, you, know, you can see some of the uh, cleft open drifts along that road there. I'm going to mosey on down there to the motorway, which you might be able to hear whispering in the distance. And see even cars moving backwards and forwards down there. It's the M3. Now there's a bridge there and then the supermarket. Nearly done. Nearly there. Which is good because I think I'm running out of battery. On, on. Excuse me, can we get some more grit here please? I don't think we've got quite enough. <laughs> some sort of massacre's gone on here. Oh god, I hope it is grit. Yeah, too pink. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Might just keep on moving. You can see how deep that is. That's about... Uh, there I am for scale. That's about, yeah, nipple high. So, uh, some severe ploughing going on down here. <laughs> and, and in the course of that, they just totally undone the work that the gritting lorry had done. Fantastic. Joined up thinking there. <laughs> just, oh god, it's horrific. Uh, red snow everywhere. Red, red. Uh, there's the M3 again. Busy, busy. Transport and commerce never sleeps. Can't quite see it from here, but round that bend is just beyond the bend there is the bridge I used this morning. So more or less a full circle. And over there's suburbia. Patch Warren. And uh, supermarket, you might even be able to see the lights there just in the distance. Splendid. I didn't die. I didn't think I was gonna die. But uh, that was okay. Yeah. Civilization. It's nice because that rain's picking up quite a bit now. Things I do for fun. Ah, there we are. Made it. Uh, it's about 16 miles in about 8 hours, 2 miles an hour. Quite slow going because of the nature of the terrain and the weird snow drifts everywhere. But ready for the pole, I think. Um, either really. You've seen one, you've seen them, you've seen them both. Yeah, so thanks for watching, uh, and uh, hopefully some of that was uh, at least a little bit interesting. Uh, and I'm going to go and find a bus and a ready meal. Probably a posh one with the fancy writing and the black plastic that can't be recycled very easily. So uh, I'm going to stop doing these for a while now. I'll take a bit of a break, but uh, join me in May for part two of the Southwest Coast Path. Um, more rambling and rambling. Till then, see you later.